So the last thing we're going to talk to you about is this, the rise and rise of the mobile feed. Now, obviously, <coughs> at Media24 and internationally, we're way past the point of being surprised that mobile is the future. I mean, we all know this. But what was interesting was some of the takeaways um, from mobile and how we can use it better. So uh, this information comes from Anne Mack, who is from Facebook. And what she said was really interesting to me, and that's that before you start serving people the same content on a mobile device, think about what that mobile device means to the person. Just the proximity that it has to your body compared to a TV screen that you watch means that it's a much more personal device. Um, think about the last time you lost your mobile phone. You, we don't lose our phones anymore because they're always in our hands. I mean, we take them to the bathroom with us, for heaven's sakes. So what she was saying was um, that mobile phone is an incredibly personal device, and they've done studies that show that you can elicit a much more emotional response from people by serving them emotional content on their phone versus showing it um, on a, screen, uh, a TV that's sort of detached from them. I thought that was absolutely extraordinary. It also makes us think about the type of things that we're serving on our mobile devices and the commercial opportunities that we could have um, on mobile itself. Also, interestingly, people read stuff way faster on mobile than they do on desktop. Something that takes two and a half seconds for you to read on a desktop takes you 1.7 seconds to read on a mobile device. So you really do have a shorter attention span on mobile. These are some of the, oh, sorry, Nielsen also said that the American adult unlocks their cell phone 150 times a day and um, spends 105 mobile minutes um, every single day. I would venture to guess that it's probably more in South Africa, um, particularly as people often only have a mobile device to use, but obviously I don't have definitive statistics on that. So here were some of the best practices from Facebook and from the New York Times who are really pioneering mobile storytelling. Build for mobile from start. And I think that's something that we're starting to do more and more. Stop thinking about your desktop actually and just build for mobile. Design for sound off um, and delight with sound on. So you can have an option where there is sound but always make sure that you're able to view it without that audio. Obviously, tell a visual story, but it goes one step further, and that's that you must tell a visual story from top to bottom in a really linear narrative. So on desktop, for instance, we could have different buttons, and we could do a special feature where people click left and right. But in mobile, that's not the way we view things. We start and we scroll to the bottom. So when you're creating a mobile story, think about how it's going to start, think about the middle, and think about the ending. And remember that your audience isn't going to deviate from that. Um, and then just a last note on VR when it <coughs> comes to mobile. Although people um, predict, and the experts predict, it's going to be 20 years until we have a VR experience with headsets um, in kind of homes and, and, and schools, workplaces. It will probably be sooner um, on mobile. So try and think about your 360 experiences, not necessarily VR, the 360 experiences on your mobile device, because that's probably going to get taken up quicker than any other type of virtual reality. Guys, and that's us. Thank you so much for your time. Um, if you want to hear more about how cab drivers now, when they hear you from South Africa, ask you if you know the Antwoord rather than Nelson Mandela, <laughs> what it feels like to go to a, ro a rodeo show and then to a little Wayne concert, you're welcome to ask us more questions. <laughs> Thank you.